Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome back to another video. And today I am going to do my currently inked. And this is my ink journal. I've talked about it in the last few of these ink videos. And we are going to talk just a little bit about August. Let me get there. And then I will show you what I'm thinking for September, which is my wedding month. I did go a little nuts when it comes to the pins, but we'll get to that. But for August, I inked up six pins and I used completely this Pilot E95S with the Diamond Sepia. Like this combination was like amazing. I liked it so much and I went to refill this one, but I refilled it with the Noodler's Beaver because I had this as a sample and I wanted to test it out, but I did like this combo better. And let's see, what else do I have here? I added in another pen that was from the Atlas Stationers Sidewalk Sale. I got an Omniflex pen and I'll show you that one a little later because I am migrating this over. And I did document that I purchased a pen here. So overall, a good month, a little dark color wise, but that's kind of my vibe. I did use up entirely. I need to put a little check mark, but I did completely use up this Kaweco Sport cartridge. So yeah, let's flip over and get into what I have inked for September. I already have the page kind of set up here, but I am gonna try to format it a little differently this month, I think. So the first ones that we wanna look at are the ones that are being migrated over. And the first one is this Twisby Diamond 580. And this is in the black and rose gold color with an extra fine nib. And I've really been loving this combination. So the ink for this one is a, a Sailor Zaragokoro, maybe that's how you say that. And I'm gonna do a little, let's see, let's do a little M or migrate it. And I'll do a little. But yeah, I don't know how to really describe this ink. It looks black. It looks pretty boring, I think, maybe on camera but there's so many like cool subtleties to it. It has like a little purple, a little gray, a little blue in there. And uh, yeah, so this is a, gonna try to keep it in these boxes. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm totally just going off the cuff here, but. Twisby Diamond 580 and an extra fine. And I'll say B. RG for black rose gold. And then the ink is Sailor Zare Gakoro. I feel like that is right. And then I'll do a little. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, let me, I'll show you what this ink looks like. I have my Rhodia paper with me. And I will show you what this ink looks like on that paper, maybe with a bigger swatch. Okay, I have my Rhodia paper really quick. This is a super awesome dip pen. This bullet, I don't think this is brass. I can't remember, stainless steel. This bullet nib is super awesome because it holds the ink in these little grooves here and you can write, I don't know, you can write for a good long time. But here is that Sailor ink. So you can see a little bit better on here, like a little bit of the blue, a little bit of that gray. And sometimes you can see it when I'm writing with this extra fine, but it's not as prevalent on this other paper here. come back to it. But yeah, that is the first pen that I'm migrating over. And then I'm also migrating over the new purchase of this Monte Verde. And this is the one of the trees of the world pens. And so this one is the giant sequoia uh, color and it's very beautiful. It has some wood here and then it has a lovely teal color and some silver gray. 
So let me also say, before we even get into the other pins, that my September planner bullet journal theme is based on my wedding color story. And so a lot of the pens and inks this month will be as well. And so this has a very gorgeous teal ink in it by Diamine. And it means water of the Nile. It's in French. And I'm not going to try to say it, but that's what it means. Water of the Nile. See, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit this in here. So we are going to abandon ship. Trees of the world giant sequoia. And this nib is the Omniflex nib and I'm just going to do O. The ink is Diamine. Water of the Nile. And the really fun thing about this nib, I'll show it here, maybe, hopefully. And then also I'll show it here. Is that it has a little bit of flex to it. Gorgeous. I love it. It's super fun to write with. Like it's not so much flex that the learning curve is super high, but it definitely writes comfortably just regular writing as well. So love this pen. I think it's gorgeous. And I got it from Atlas Stationers. I'm not sure if they still have it, but if you end up getting any inks or pens from Atlas Stationers, I do have a code there now. And the code is Royal 10. That'll get you 10% off over there. Thank you so much in advance. If you do end up getting anything, I love their shop. They have pens, inks, papers, stickers, washi tape, all the things. And so the last pen that I migrated over from last month is the Leonardo Memento and this is in the plum color. I got this at Apple Boom in the Netherlands and I got the wonderful Annabelle to kind of tune that nib for me and she did not tell me she was a rock star and I didn't know at the time but she's amazing. The only thing different about this pen from last month is that I changed out the ink. So last month I had Diamine Writer's Blood in there and I thought it was a little dark. Not that I super tried to be matchy matchy but it is fun for me because I love color. And so I want something a little lighter from Wearingle. And this is the Henry Jekyll ink from the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde combination and so you mix this with another ink and you get the uh mr hyde but this is the jekyll and i thought it matched a little bit better so let's just see oh let me do my little scribble yeah i don't know if i like how close this all looks but we're, like I said, in the setting up this ink journal, I'm just trying out something fun for the rest of this year and then I'll figure it out by next year, hopefully. Memento plum and an extra fine. And the ink is wearing wool. Henry Jekyll. And we're gonna do some. But yeah, I think this matches a lot better. And it's super smooth in this pen. So I think I like this combination a little bit better. But I will, let's pop over back over to the Rhodia paper and I'll show you those other two. This one I feel like you can see pretty well on there and it's not much different, but I will show you the Henry Jekyll. You can also see how that's changed up a little bit since drying. Hopefully, maybe I can. <laughs> we'll check back in on that when that dries. 
Okay, now we are getting into the new pins and there are oh, quite a lot of them and there are reasons. I initially told myself I would only ink up three new pins every month and you know, this is a special month and there's gonna be a lot of writing. There's gonna be lots of traveling around and writing down notes for work things and wedding things and cards and all of that. So I wanted to ink up a few extra pens. Okay, so the first one we will talk about is the Twisby Eco. This is the white and rose gold color. And inked up in here, I have a Ferris wheel press ink and this is the cloak and forest from their fairy tales collection and it's one of my favorites it does have a little bit of shimmer in it but it's an interesting like dark green but also leans a little bit teal sometimes let's be eco and this one is a me it doesn't say but i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure this is a medium nib and we'll say white rose gold the ink is ferris wool press cloak and forest i also have a code for ferris wool ink ferris wool ink ferris wool press as well and that code is royal if you want to save a little bit directly from their site but atlas stationers also has ferris wool press stuff so if one doesn't have it check the other for sure but uh there's a little bit of yeah there's a little bit of shimmer happening there i'll show you that one on the rhodia paper because this is a little bit closer to the paper that I'm using in my bullet journal. So it's a little bit better of a representation. I initially did the ink journal in here because it was what was available and I wanted to use this undated planner. And now I'm getting just a little picky on wanting things to match up a little better. I'm gonna shake this up so that we get some of that shimmer. This is actually one of my favorite Ferris wool press inks. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but don't care. I love it. See how it looks like more green on here, but it looks more blue on here, even though it's still drying, but we'll come back to it. It's just a little more green initially on the Kinbor paper over here. Okay, let's move on. The next pen ink combo that we are going to look at is the Jin Hao 100 Centennial even maybe? I have no idea, no idea. But it is a knockoff of one of the Aurora pens. I'll maybe pop it up on the screen so you can see which one I think this one is trying to knock off. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, totally fine. But I think this pen ran me like $14 or something and the Aurora pen is like $800. So this one's definitely more in the price bracket that I wanna stay. But it's gorgeous, it writes really well. And I wanted to keep most of the pens that I'm gonna be taking around this month, like not my super expensive pens, just in case like I don't completely trust myself yet to be taking pens out and about. Oh yeah, funny story about this. I'll definitely have to get the Rhodia paper. So <laughs> the ink that's in here is Ferris Wool Press's Brilliant Beanstalk, which is a new ink that's come out on September 1st. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous green color. However, I don't think my nib was completely cleaned out from the last time I used this and the last ink that I had in this pen was actually this Water of the Nile here. And so right now I'm just getting a mixture of the Brilliant Bean stock with the Diamine Waters of the Nile. So at some point, and I think this will actually be really fun to have this gradient out throughout the month into a lovely green, but I will show you what this ink color looks like 
pure, when it's pure. So I'm just gonna call it Jin Hao 100. This is a medium nib. And this is the colorful colorway name. It's just colorful, I do believe. Ink. Oh, I'm just gonna say what it is. It's the Ferris Wheel Press Brilliant Beanstalk. And maybe I'll, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna notate that it's mixed, but I guess I won't. <laughs> it looks kind of similar to this, but this is, this mix is really pretty. I will show you what this will turn into at some point. And it does have like a, whoa. Yep, cool. I didn't have it closed all the way. <laughs> this is what it looks like. No, good times, good times. I guess that could have been worse. See how pretty that is? and it does have some shimmer in it. But it's definitely not that color. So eventually it'll turn into this really pretty green. Boo, I cannot believe I got ink everywhere. <laughs> that's on brand. Yeah, that's fun. That's also why I always have paper towels at the ready. This is how I live my life now. <laughs> okay. And you can see we we have a little bit of shimmer going on with the cloak and forest. It looks like, and I'm sure I can find this online, but I'm just going to guess. It looks like there's some like blue shimmer in there. Okay. Let's move on. The next one that I'm going to ink up and I'm going to move over to this side is the, wow, this is a really like Ferris wheel press heavy, <laughs> currently inked. So this is the Esterbrook and Ferris wheel press collaboration pen, the Nebulous Plume. I'm kind of going back on what I said about only, not really only, but inking cheaper pens because this is probably the most expensive pen I have, but mm, I don't know if I'm going to be taking this out and about, but I love this pen. It's so pretty. It has like super subtle sparkle in it. Hopefully you can see that. But I love it because it has so many different colors like mixed in here and you can pretty much put any color in it and it would match if that were your goal. And this time around, this is actually the first time that I've inked this pen. I'm using uh, another kind of red color. And this ink is Ferris Wool Press's Cabernet on the Lake, which is also a new ink color. This ink typically does have shimmer in it. And I will show you that in just a bit, but I did not add the shimmer, a lot of shimmer, any, I tried to not add any shimmer in this pen because the nib is extra fine. I do have another Estabrook SD and you can swap out the nibs pretty easily, but I had so many kind of like medium and thicker nibs on the docket that I wanted to do the extra fine for this. Nebulous plume and an extra fine. The ink is Ferris Wheel Press Cab. I've been doing um, an acronym for this. <laughs> Cabernet on the Lake. It's just slightly, slightly more pinky than this red. I will show you. Ugh, look at it, look at it. Let's see, first we'll press. And I'll show you what it looks like with the shimmer. So we're gonna hopefully carefully shake it up. Yeah, so you can see it 
here for sure that there are some differences between Henry Jekyll and um, okay, right on the lake. Yeah, you can see that shimmer in there too. But yeah, look at this color palette so far. Okay, now I do have another Jin Hao and I need to go grab it because it's in my purse right now. Okay, got it. Jin Hao 82 is this pen. It is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim knockoff. It is really cheap as well, I think. Mm, I don't remember, maybe four or five dollars. I got this from AliExpress or Timu or one of those. But look how pretty this color is. Me. <laughs> but yeah, uh, again, it's just a nice pen to throw in the bag, carry around, and not have to be too precious with it. I will say that the nibs are hit and miss. I have a couple of these, and the other two, like one of the nibs is fine, and another one I didn't really love the nib. This one, the nib was fine, but I wanted to upgrade it because I really like the color, and so I got a number five nib, I wanna say, from Goulet Pens, and so this is a Goulet nib in there, maybe. Hopefully the lighting isn't terrible or you can't see that, but, but it is a different nib in here and it writes a little bit smoother, but the ink is another Ferris wheel press ink and this is Madame Mulberry and it's a very pretty like silver gray blue color and I really love it. Jin Hao 82. This is the medium nib and I will put Goulet. So I know it's a Goulet nib and ink. Ferris will press Madame Mulberry. And I'll show you what this Madame Mulberry looks like when it's swatched. This one doesn't have any extra features as far as shimmer, maybe some shading. I'm not sure officially. But it is wet. <laughs> how pretty. Yeah, I love how it's like a little purpley, a little silvery, a little gray. -y. I'll do a little overlapping. Let's see. Okay, and the next pen is going to be a super special pen. I got this specifically to sign the marriage license with, i.e. another excuse to buy a pen. Um, so this one I got from Atlas Stationers as well, and it is the Parker IM pen, and I don't have any other Parkers, but I got a super good deal on this from the Atlas Stationer site. And I just thought the nib on this was so freaking cute. It's so like squatty. But I got it in a medium because Cam, I'm slowly trying to get him in the fountain pens. I know for a fact that he would love all of the nuances with fountain pens, but it's a slow process. <laughs> I know he likes medium nibs, and so I did get this one in a medium nib, and it is inked up with, can you guess what brand? <laughs> Ferris Will Press Stroke of Midnight. So it's a dark blue black color. I love that it's called Stroke of Midnight. That gives me the fairy tale princess vibes. I thought it was perfect for the occasion. Ooh, it's super smooth on this paper. I betcha it's super smooth on this Rhodia paper too. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really written with this one. Yeah, that's gonna be great. And I love, A, this little clip design is super cute and it has like this slow, kind of like the Pilot E95S where it's a snap cap, so it's quick. 
but it also like, you know, when you, oh, I don't know what this is called. When you open up Apple boxes and it's like that slow kind of tension release, but it, I don't know, it's smooth, but it has a little bit of tension. I love it. But that is that. I will swatch that stroke of midnight really quickly. And this isn't really a wedding color. This is just um, between the sailor and the stroke of midnight. It's just like you have to have your practical blue and slash black inks. Gorgeous, look at what's happening here. Okay. Another thing that I do want to start bringing into these currently inks, it will show up here and there, is what is in my inkwell. So I also recently did the Kickstarter for the Ferris Wheel Press Carousel Inkwell, and I just have it sitting on my desk and it's kind of paired with this Kakamori nib and nib holder. And, you know, when I want to dip into some different ink that's not on the roster for the month, I'm just going to go for the inkwell. It's just been sitting there and it's pretty awesome. I will show you what the deal is. So it, for one, is obviously a carousel ride. It's shaped like such. Super cute. You can close up your inks like that. If you have a shimmer ink in here, you can set it right on that middle piece and you can spin it to kind of agitate that ink and have your shimmer kind of mixed up there. And then I don't have too, too much ink in here. I just dip, I just have a sample in here because I'm thinking that this will be a good way to use up the many samples I have. But there's another groove along the bottom that you can set that little middle piece in as well and it'll lean it for you. So that is easy to just dip and swatch. So this ink is a diamine ink that I have a sample of. This is the entire sample, what I have left in here. And this is Arctic Blast. So it's very blue, has lots of shading, lots of shimmer. It's super fun. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> But yeah, this one, I'm just gonna do a lot, a big one. This one will be fun to show you when it's dry. But yeah, this little carousel is now available, or at least for pre-order on Ferris Wheel Press's site and Atlas Stationers. So I will try to link as much as I can down in the description, anything from Atlas will be an affiliate link, just FYI, no extra cost to you. Your purchases just support the channel and what I've got going on here. But yeah, I really think this is super cute on my desk and it's super functional and I'm going to get rid of my samples. Can you see that? Can you see the like shimmer? It's like high high amounts of glitter in that Arctic Blast ink. And sometimes it does a little purple on certain papers. I don't, there's a little bit of purple happening, but on other papers, oh yeah, I can see in here. On other papers, there's a little more purple. It's just really interesting to see how different inks respond to different papers. But here is the lineup. Once again, we have the Twisby Diamond 580, this Monte Verde for this, the Leonardo Omento, the Twisby Eco, hopefully you can see these, I'm just gonna stick them there, the Jin Hao 100, Estabrook, Ferris Wheel Press Combo, the Jin Hao 82, and the Parker I am. So I inked up more than three pens this month. We'll see what happens and let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you've got going on. 
inked up for the month? How many do you ink up per month? Do you care? Do you just ink up what you want? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.